Welcome to the final video of our three-part discussion with Resident Commissioner of Puerto Rico, Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. In part three, we discuss why Puerto Rico's status as a U.S. territory is not just a Puerto Rican issue, but a national one. We delve into the economic and cultural ties between Puerto Rico and the United States, emphasizing how decisions made regarding the island's status and its governance directly affect the American public. But our conversation doesn't end here. We have more engaging content available on our YouTube channel that explores various aspects of Puerto Rico's journey towards full equality and democracy through statehood. So please make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date and to participate in the conversation. Now, let's dive into our discussion with Resident Commissioner of Puerto Rico, Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colón. Last year was an incredibly important year for you and for this issue of resolving Puerto Rico's territorial status. Um, you helped to lead negotiations and to achieve the House passage of a historic bipartisan compromise bill, the Puerto Rico Status Act. So congratulations. Um, a new version of this bill was introduced in this session. Can you tell us a bit about what this bill does, why it's historic, and what you're trying to get this Congress to do with that legislation and this issue? I'll tell you what. Many of the people here in Congress always have said in the past, get your things together in Puerto Rico, decide among yourself, and whenever you're ready, just came to con come to Congress and we will hear you out. And that was happening for the last 50 years. I decided to, to, to break a deal, to get something done, and to be thinking outside, outside, outside the box. And that means why we need to come back to Congress every four years just to them to hear, hear us out without taking a concrete action. And that's the reason this project is so different. This bill will allow the people of Puerto Rico to have a self-executing process. Whatever is the choice of the people, if you want to become a state, you will become a state. If you want to become an independent nation, that I do not support that, but yet, is the official position of the U.S. Department of Justice that those are the only non-territorial options. You should have the right to vote for independence or independence in association with the United States. That, that's a decision that will remain on the hands of Puerto Ricans, uh, not on the states, not on Congress, not on each state like many other people believe. This bill is different because it, it will allow to have non-territorial, non-colonial options. That never happened before. Before, many people were like inventing or creating new statuses that were not even there. Uh, remember, in, 19, in the 1900s and then um, 1917, we were imposed different federal laws. Even in the 1950s, when we brought our constitution, it was take or leave it. I mean, it was approved on the island, but Congress actually revised it. And, and, and then it was imposed. We're talking about whatever is the decision of Puerto Ricans is going to be respected and is, is going to become a federal law. So this bill will allow a definite solution, final solution. This is not, there's not going to be any other question. You will be asked, you want to become part of the United States as a state, yes or no? You want to become an independent nation, yes or no? You want to become an independent nation in association with the United States? Yes or no? And whatever is the choice of the people of Puerto Rico, that's going to be the final option. The president of the United States needs to enact uh, that legislation, and that never happened before. Every time we got a lot of plebiscites or referendums that are even not, were not even validated by the federal government, and that's the main difference about this bill. We did file that bill during the last year. We got more than 80 co-sponsors, uh, so we're looking to increase uh, that number, we're looking to create grassroots, people visiting Congress, veterans, youth people, everybody coming to educate members of Congress. That's the problem. You have a Congress every two years. This is an issue that has been around for 125. Uh, so you need to educate a lot of members of Congress in a short period of, of time. And many, many, many times a lot of those members tell you, I do not have a lot of Puerto Ricans living in my district. Why should I hear this issue out? Um, just imagine you lose right away your right to vote. Just imagine that in your state. You cannot, you cannot, I mean, you're going to put on hold your civil rights just allowing somebody else to take any other decision. That's what's happening with Puerto Rico every day. 
we, we are used to that. And that's not the way we, we were taught uh, to be living the American way. Excellent. Um, one of the things that I think is really important for our audience to hear about is for a lot of people um, living in the States, it's hard to really think how this impacts them. Like, why is this issue important? Why should they pay attention to this? Um, can you tell us why you believe that this is an issue that impacts all Americans, not just the Puerto Ricans and U.S. citizens living on the island, but also the rest of the population of that's, our country? That's a, that's a very good question. I think many Americans have never been to China. Many Americans have never been to the Pacific Islands. But yet, they do know that China is a threat to the United States. Many people are not never been or got the opportunity to visit Russia, but they do know they're a political uh, player at the national arena, threatening or national security in many ways. You know what? Puerto Rico got those neighbors back home. We are in the Caribbean border. You got China, you got Cuba, you got Venezuela having interest with Iran, with Chinese companies doing business in the Latin American border. And there are neighbors. You got Dominican Republic, you got Cuba, you got Venezuela, you got Colombia, and you got all that influence, influence just behind us. Um, how the Latin American countries are gonna be feeling comfortable about national security if the United States just leave around an island that is a U.S. possession without any protection. Uh, this is bigger than Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico is part of the United States. It's that you're leaving your child behind. You're leaving your family behind. That's the way some people feel about us. I mean, you know how many people are fighting to get a green card in the United States? How many people are losing their life just because they're crossing the border with Mexico and Texas just to get a better life. And yet you have 3.2 million Americans by birth that are denied all those rights just because they are a territory of the United States. Puerto Rico is a national issue. Puerto Rico is part of the United States for many reasons. We, were, we, we used to have a Navy base in the, in the World War II. Um, they were defending the Caribbean border with the United States. Right now, with all the Chinese actors, the Russian actors, Iranian actors in the Caribbean, I think more than ever, Puerto Rico should be an asset of national security uh, back in the Caribbean, um, giving more strength uh, to our allies as well. And yet, we do speak Spanish and English. What else do you want to have uh, from your citizens that actually can be uh, working in your behalf and, and expanding uh, what democracy feels about when you've got a lot of countries that do have problems with this. Look at what happening, what's happening in Nicaragua. Look at what's happening in Venezuela. That's not the way we want to go. Uh, we, we learn uh, our, our way of life since we were at school. We were part of the United States, and I think many people should believe that as an American citizen, we do not we do not need a passport. Uh, we're part of the U.S., whether you like it or not. Uh, but why depriving us from our rights, not, not voting rights, but even civil rights in many ways, uh, just because we decided to remain on an island and not live in Miami? Just because our zip code? That happened with Hawaii and Alaska. Look where, I, where they are. <laughs> um, and look how important the positions of Alaska and Hawaii are now in that fight in the Pacific. Same thing is happening at, at the Atlantic level. Many people will remember what happened during the pandemic, that a lot of uh, drugs, uh, a lot of uh, I mean, medical equipment uh, was uh, having shortages in, in, in the United States. Guess what? More, most of them are being made in Puerto Rico. Um, so we part, we're part of the economy of the United States. Uh, so if something is happening in Puerto Rico, that will affect directly each state. And we saw that uh, during the pandemic. So there are many ways we are connected in the economic fabric of the United States, in the cultural area. And of course, uh, people uh, that are teachers now are coming from the island, they're teachers in, in, in each state and vice versa. 
so you don't ask the people of New York what you have in common with the people in Texas because you're your neighbors. Same thing happened with Puerto Rico. Excellent. I, I think that that's incredibly important. Um, and one thing that has come up recently, uh, specifically on this whole aspect of national security and border security that you were talking about, are the recent revelations that China is actively trying to negotiate with Cuba to establish intelligence operations and military training capacities on that island. And if we look and, and, at... And Russia and yeah. Iran having facilities in Venezuela, or even in the lesser Antilles. I mean, this is not just about Cuba. You got Nicaragua with the same situation. We, we got Colombia with the new president. The United States cannot afford to have those changes in command in those countries we don't have in, without having American presence in Latin America. And we are that point. Excellent. Well, that's, that's uh, really great. Um, is there anything that you'd like to um, share with our audience um, that you think is particularly important for uh, the supporters of Puerto Rico 51st and the um, American public at large to, to First hear? of all, saying thank you. Uh, saying thank you for all the support for this bill and for the quest of achieving statehood for Puerto Rico. I don't have any doubt that we're gonna be, we can achieve statehood. The question is how fast we can make that happen. Uh, and that means that we need support. We need people visiting members of Congress. We need people writing emails, calling their offices. Uh, because again, this is an issue. If you if you are going to be waiting 50 years to 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 uh, become state, I think it's going to happen way before that. Um, another issue: we do have this fiscal board that is being approved by the by Congress. Uh, just imagine having a fiscal entity approved by Congress to supervise each state. That will never be allowed, never be allowed. Never. In the case of Puerto Rico, they decide everything, even the local laws of the island. Uh, so that may sound ridiculous, but that's what's happening. Even with the will of the people, elected, elected members of the House and the Senate and the island, the governor, their will has not been heard because you got a federal entity supervising or taking decisions by the government of Puerto Rico. Uh, that, that's the best example of being a possession, of being a colony, where you cannot determine anything because you got somebody else taking those decisions for you. Um, that's the way I feel here sometimes, when you need to uh, be balancing uh, when some interest groups uh, with economic uh, reasons come and fight for an issue. And, and you try to defend the people of the island, but then because we are a territory, the United States can even discriminate. Um, and it will depend who's friend, of, who's friend of who in power. The people of the island cannot allow this to be uh, the way of life. Every four years, who's gonna, be, who's gonna be the friend of the president, who's gonna be the friend of the Senate or the House, or even having one member of Congress saying that we should not be a state. They can say that here, but Constitution gave them uh, the responsibility of possessions and, and territories. And one of those uh, rights and, and uh, responsibilities they do have is actually admitting states. And we're ready to do that. Puerto Rico is ready uh, to become a state. And I heard so many people before saying that Puerto Rico should put their finances in order before becoming a state again. How you want Puerto Rico to have their finances in balance when you're crippling our economy with federal laws that treat you differently, that never allow business on the island to have the same opportunities that, that the one ha that do have in the states, uh, that there's no stability in federal laws, stability in, in, in federal ruling, uh, and you do have to be fighting every day just to manage your way of life and balancing uh, those inequities. Um, so believe me, once Puerto Rico becomes a state, I can assure Puerto Rico is going to become one of the prosperous state of the nation. And actually right now we do pay more federal taxes than even Vermont. That is a state. And that's a fact. Uh, just imagine how important Puerto Rico can be in that manufacturing area, medical pharmacy, medical equipment. And now aeronautics, like that's one of the areas that we're improving in Puerto Rico right now. Just remember what happened here in Ilma Maria. 
an island, part of the U.S., without power, without water, and without any connection with the world. That's something that you feel proud about, having American citizens is living in that way? That should not be, that. That should not be the way out. Uh, instead of sending money, give us the right to vote. That's the best way to solve anything. And we, we will manage to stand up. We will manage to get a better economy. And I know that we will be better proud of be, to be American citizens and proud, and proud Puerto, Puerto Ricans. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Congresswoman. We greatly appreciate your time. Gracias a ti. Gracias. Hey, mi gente. We hope you enjoyed the three-part video series of Congresswoman Jennifer Gonzalez Colon. Before we wrap up, I'd like to personally invite you to join our Voices for Statehood campaign. Voices for Statehood is a nationwide effort asking all Americans to take a stand against colonialism and generations of territorial inequality by sharing what motivates you to support statehood for Puerto Rico. We want to know what connects you to the cause as we grow the Statehood for Puerto Rico movement and amplify your voice through the halls of Congress. Visit PR51st.com to share your story today.